Welcome to the Brunswick Beat. Brunswick County's only television news show brought to you by the Brunswick Beacon. I'm Rachel Johnson. And I'm Stacy Manning. On Tuesday, Brunswick County Sheriff deputies gathered to remember one of their own. K-9 Viper died in the line of duty Saturday from exposure to toxins in cocaine he found during a search in a cornfield in Ash. Hundreds of people gathered to remember Viper, who Sheriff John Ingram described as a partner, colleague, and family member. Viper was more than a sheriff's canine. He was a co-worker, a partner, and companion. But most importantly, he was family. The canine unit has become an integral part of our agency, most often at the forefront of our drug enforcement efforts. Operating in such a manner involves great risk to our deputies and canines, yet they continue to perform their duties faithfully without reservation. We sat down with Viper's handler, Deputy Jared Zeller, who shared some of his memories about his partner. I was part of a Viper. Um, it would have been coming up on three years next month. Um, you know, it was probably one of the best three years of my law enforcement career so far. You know, it was it was great. You know, I had him with me every day. Every day I went to work, 12 hours a day he was with me. Um, when I went home, he went home with me. He was, he was, he was a family member. He wasn't just a dog. No. Two suspects have been arrested for trafficking the cocaine that led to Viper's death. Gralulio Yanez Marin, 28, and Jamie Lopez Gonzalez, 32, both of Ash, were both charged with trafficking in cocaine and conspiring to traffic cocaine. Both suspects were taken to the Brunswick County Detention Center, where they were placed on a $1 million secured bonds. More than three years after the murder of Shalote realtor Adam Bradshaw, one of two defendants charged with his slaying has pleaded guilty. Last week, Laura Moultrie pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. As part of her plea agreement, she will become a state, state's witness in the case against her co-defendant, Craig Bryant. She is expected to serve between 15 and 16 and a half years in prison. Also in court this week, Superior Court Judge William Pittman ruled against Senior County Resident Superior Court Judge Ola Lewis in her libel suit lawsuit against Ed Rapp. Lewis sued Rapp, a local activist and former campaign strategist, for libel and defamation for an April 2010 blog post written during a heated Republican primary election. Pittman found no genuine issue of material fact. Lewis will have to pay Rapp's attorney and court fees as part of the judgment, which Rapp called a win for the First Amendment. Candidate filing for 17 of the county's 19 municipalities has closed. Absent from this year's candidates field are three Brunswick County mayors, Sunset Beach Mayor Ronald Klein, Calabash Mayor Anthony Clemens, and Carolina Shores Mayor Stephen Selby have not filed for re-election. To find out why they aren't running and for a full listing of who has filed, pick up the beacon or log on to www.brunswickbeacon.com. The General Assembly has released new maps in the ongoing redistricting saga. The proposed state map splits Brunswick County into District 17, currently represented by Oak Island Republican Frank Eiler, and District 18. District 18 is represented by Susie Hamilton, a Wilmington Democrat whose distri district is currently exclusively on the other side of the Cape Fear River. On Tuesday, the second round of congressional maps were released, completely drawing out District 7 incumbent Mike McIntyre. If the maps are approved, Brunswick County will remain in District 7. Parts of New Hanover and Pender Counties have also been drawn out of District 7. Governor Bev Perdue has called upon the General Assembly to reject a proposal that would merge several rural community colleges. She has called an attack on rural North Carolina. Dr. Suzanne Adams, Brunswick County's college's new president, stands with Purdue in opposition. Under the proposal, BCC would merge with Cape Fear Community College in Wilmington. The schools would share a staff, including a president, payroll, and some IT and other positions. Adams is worried that the plan would hurt the school that is already well supported here in Brunswick County. Tourism in Brunswick County appears to be on the rise this season. Numerous area rental agencies, Chamber of Commerce's, and the Tourism De Development Authority are reporting anywhere from a 5 to 10 percent increase in tourism. The majority of tourists attracted to the area are from North Carolina, with others from the Midwest and other southeastern states tying for second. For all the details, read this week's Beacon. 
The town of Calabash will observe its fourth annual town hall day from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. this Friday, July 22nd. State Senator Bill Rabin will take part, as will new Calabash Town Administrator Charles Nance. Local elect elected officials will be present, and there will be food, games, and prizes. For more information, call Calabash Town Hall at 579-6747. Read more about these stories and find out what's happening in your community in this week's Beacon, available on newsstands now. Hi, I'm Stacy Manning, Managing Editor of the Brunswick Beacon. Did you get engaged recently or married? Have you celebrated a milestone anniversary or did you have a baby? How about letting us share the news with our readers? You can email your social news to me at editor at brunswickbeacon.com or you can log on to our website at www.brunswickbeacon.com. Look for the submit news icon near the top right hand corner of the page. Deadlines are noon each Friday. Members of the West Brunswick High School dance team brought home three trophies and 45 blue ribbons for their effort at Universal Dance Association's summer instructional camp at Wake Forest University. The team spent four days on campus in Winston-Salem and returned with the collection July 10th. The girls won the 110% trophy, the drill down trophy, and the superior trophy for earning all the blue ribbons. The Dixie Boys 14-year-olds and the Junior Boys 13-year-olds baseball teams began their state tournament Saturday at Smithville Park. The Brunswick Junior Dixie Boys and the Brunswick Dixie Boys won their first two games Saturday and Sunday. The Junior Tournament ends July 20th and the Senior Tournament ends July 21st. Winners advance to the World Series played in South Carolina. The Brunswick North Debs lost to Burgaw 6-0 in the championship game of the North Carolina Dixie Softball Game State Tournament July 13th. The game, played in 102 degree heat, was for the bid to go to the World Series in Louisiana. North had won its first game against Cape Fear on July 9th and then lost to Burgaw on July 10th. They went on to defeat East Columbus on July 12th and earned the chance to advance to the final playoff spot against undefeated Burgaw. Brunswick Family Assistance will host its 13th annual fundraising run on September 10th at Sea Trail in Sunset Beach. It will consist of a 10K run and a 5K run, a 10K walk, and a one-mile fun run. The BFA 10K 5K will be the first leg of a three-race series coordinated by five Star Race Productions. The second race will be a 15K run October 16th at Brunswick Forest, and the final leg of the race series is the Battleship Half Marathon November 6th in Wilmington. Runners who compete all the, complete all three races will receive a prize package. Registration forms are available at Five Star Race Productions by calling 398-5539 or by stopping by the BFA office in Chalote. Find weekly sports updates and many great photos in the sports section of your weekly beacon. Stacy Manning, Managing Editor of the Brunswick Beacon. Do you have a community event you'd like to tell our community about? You can email it to me at editor at brunswickbeacon.com or you can log on to our website at www.brunswickbeacon.com. Look for the Submit News icon near the top right hand corner of the page. Deadlines are noon each Friday. Hi, I'm Laura Lewis. I'm out here at Brunswick County Animal Shelter today with Chipper. He is a red dachshund, about six years old. He's a stray who was found in Leland. He's been here since June 6th. He's had his shots, and he's described as very sweet, energetic, and happy-go-lucky. He would make a great pet for anybody. So come on out and visit. They're open from 10 to 4, Mondays through Saturdays, on Green Swamp Road. So come on out. There's other dogs and cats available for adoption as well. 
Is it true, Stacy, that the shelter will no longer be open on Saturdays? That's right, Rachel. Starting this weekend, Brunswick County Animal Services will no longer be open to the public on Saturdays. The animal shelter on Green Swamp Road is stopping those hours on a trial basis due to reduction in staff. It's also a cost-cutting measure. Shelter business hours are now 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. weekdays with public visitation hours with adoptable dogs and cats from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. weekdays. It was an evening of old Hollywood glamour, a red carpet, tuxedos, and evening gowns. And it was just as hospital president Denise Mihal wanted for the inaugural fundraiser for the hospital foundation to be, extravagant. With Brunswick Novant Medical Center set to open to the public July 31st, Guests of the Foundation Gala were given a sneak peek of the new 74-bed, $107 million state-of-the-art hospital last Thursday evening. The gala served as the kickoff fundraising event for the Brunswick Novant Medical Center Foundation, which was founded in November 2010. More than $167,000 was raised for the hospital foundation at Thursday evening's event. Check out a special inside look at the new hospital on Health Watch, set to air here on ATMC TV Channel 3 throughout the month of August. This week, we continue our Brunswick County Park series. This week, we dropped by the two parks, Navassa and Northwest, to check out the various activities offered. Hi, my name is Melinda Johnson, and today we're going to be uh, visiting two parks in Brunswick County in our north area. The first one we're visiting is Navassa Park. It has a softball field, playground, basketball court, and tennis courts for your family to enjoy. We hope you can visit Navassa Park. My name is Trayvon, and I like to come to the park play tennis and play with my friends and coaches. My name is Tyrone and I like to come to the park to practice on things that I need to improve on and doing it with my friends. My name is Charles and I come to the park because I want to have fun and basketball. We're visiting Northwest Park, which is located off of Highway 74, just minutes outside of Leland. Behind me are basketball courts, we have a playground, and plenty of softball fields. We hope you find time to visit Navassa Park and Northwest Park today. Tune in next week as we visit another of Brunswick County's beautiful parks. This Saturday night, stand-up comedian and radio personality Ricky Smiley will be bringing his trademark humor back to Brunswick County. Smiley, who is renowned for making prank phone calls on his Atlanta radio show, is also bringing a live band for return performance at 7.30 p.m. at Odell Williamson Auditorium at Brunswick Community College. That's all the time we have for tonight, but you can read all these stories and much more in this week's Beacon. If you know of a story or a person you'd like to see featured on Brunswick Beat, email us at brunswickbeat at brunswickbeacon.com or look us up on Facebook under Brunswick Beacon or follow us on Twitter at Brunswick Beacon. Thank you for joining us and don't forget to tune in next week for a brand new edition of Brunswick Beat. Tonight's Beacon shines on the gala for the brand new hospital.